Thank you very much for this invitation. Yes, one of the important complications to left atrial appendage occlusion is uh, device thrombosis. We want to avoid device thrombosis. This can lead to stroke, and that is what we intend to prevent. So we need to do some uh, post-implant therapy to avoid device thrombosis, and do we have to use dual platelets, aspirin, is that enough? Or do we need to use uh, anticoagulation? So these uh, examples here are in fact uh, from our own case series here. Uh, in the upper two images uh, you see a large uh, thrombus here on the device. Uh, it is diagnosed both by TE here at the right panel and CT here in the left panel. You can maybe appreciate that this is a very large funnel-shaped appendage and you have a sort of infundibulum before the real orifice here. And so you have a sort of remnant here and you see a large thrombus mass has built up here. This is a, a smaller device thrombus seen here, but also in this case you can see a mechanical problem. There's a small a leakage here at the superior edge of, of the device. And again, this thrombus uh, was diagnosed uh, by CT and also by uh, TEE. Can I have the next slide, please? So, uh, I think it would be interesting to know uh, what are you normally using for uh, antithrombotic treatment after implantation of the ACP or the amulet device. A, are you using oral anticoagulation? Two, dual antiplatelets? Three, aspirin alone or nothing? So, we see that the majority are using... Uh, dual platelet therapy after implantation of the uh, amplatzer devices, and that's also the recommended treatment. So also, what is the length of time that you uh, routinely give uh, uh, antithrombotic treatment? Is it one month, three months, six months, or none? So can you vote again? Yeah, so the majority, in fact, are giving only three months of uh, antithrombotic treatment and uh, also a large proportion are giving six, six months, so between three and six months. Okay, so when you look in the literature, there's uh, quite extensive variation in the reported rate of device-related thrombosis. You can uh, see figures from 2.9% all the way up to 17.6%, so this is uh, a significant problem. At the same time, we have to realize when we do this therapy, we are mainly treating patients that has a very high bleeding risk or, in fact, had a prior serious bleeding during anticoagulation. If you look at the amulet observational study, you will see that 85% of the patients had a contraindication to oral anticoagulation uh, treatment. So when we choose antithrombotic treatment after LAAO, it is of course necessary, it is effective, but at the same time, we need uh, to have the bleeding risk uh, as low as possible. So the question is really how much antithrombotic therapy do we need to give? So the current recommendations, if you look at the Watchman device, is warfarin plus plus aspirin for 45 days, then dual antiplatelet for six months, and ASA for life. So this is quite an extensive cocktail if you have a prior, for instance, serious intracranial bleeding. The regimen after ACP or amulet is, uh, is uh, less pronounced. Uh, the recommendations are ASA and clopidogrel dual antiplatelet for one to three months, and thereafter aspirin for at least six months. In our own experience, we have used a lot of other amplats or occluders. We have used ASD and PFO closure devices. Uh, those are built from the same materials as the amplats or LAO occluders. And in our experience, and also from other centers, uh, many are using aspirin monotherapy. And uh, in those case series, we have a very low 
incidence of device thrombosis. Uh, in our own center, we have done 650 ASD PFO closures with, M with Amplatzer devices and seen only one case of device thrombosis. So this led us uh, to use, uh, consequently, only aspirin monotherapy when we started out our LAA program, which was back in 2010. So uh, until now, we have done 230 cases, and we have only used uh, aspirin monotherapy after device implantation. So uh, we have now aimed to evaluate the safety and efficacy of left atrial appendage occlusion with the Amplet cardiac plug or amulet using only this regimen of aspirin monotherapy, giving it for six months, then stopping the therapy unless there's another indication for uh, antiplatelet uh, therapy. Uh, we did report our data for the first cohort of patients, which was 107 patients. They were all done in general anesthesia guided by TE, and it has been published now in the December issue of uh, Euro Interventions uh, Intervention. But now I will report our data for our full cohort, because in the latest 109 cases, uh, we did the um, procedure in local anesthesia guided uh, by ICE, and now we have a total of 216 patients with aspirin uh, monotherapy. <coughs> so uh, this was a single center prospective non-randomized study where we used Amplatzer devices in 216 patients. We couldn't analyze three patients because they had warfarin treatment due to artificial valves and uh, one patient uh, couldn't have a device due to uh, insufficient depth of the left atrial appendage. Uh, but this was uh, our regimen, 75 milligrams of aspirin daily for at least six months unless other indications for dual antiplatelet therapy. And the primary outcome was to look at device-related thrombosis and secondary outcomes to look at efficacy, ischemic stroke, or major bleeding. And again, in our first 107 patients, the procedure was done in general anesthesia by TE uh, and uh, in the latest patient by ICE. And all our patients had a pre-procedural cardiac CT for sizing of the device. During the procedure, we used a full heparin dose of 100 units and kept ACT more than 250. How did we follow up the patients? We looked at the patient again after six to eight weeks, and we did that quite intensively because we did both cardiac CT and transit of a GL echo after six to eight weeks and again after 12 months. And later on, we could follow the patients through some of the Danish uh, um, public uh, registries for vital status and for hospitalizations. So we have a median follow-up of 1.1 year and a total of 343 patient years. And this is our total cohort, mean, mean age 73. And you can appreciate they have a high stroke risk with a chat stress score 4.2 and a HASPET score, also a large bleeding risk HASPET score 4.1. And really the primary indication for LAO in our institutions are a prior serious bleeding. And you can see almost half of the patients have suffered a prior intracranial bleeding. There are gastrointestinal bleeders. There are other bleeders from the uh, uh, urinary tract. Uh, and a few patients has also got uh, microbleeds in their brain and signs of uh, amyloid angiop angiopathy. So it's really a high-risk bleeding population. So this was what, in fact, the patient had for antithrombotic therapy, and you can see that the majority of uh, patients uh, are discharged from our unit with only aspirin monotherapy. That was 86% of the uh, patients, and again, after six months, the majority was only on uh, monotherapy, and up to 20% of the patients was completely off uh, antithrombotic treatment. And this is our results. We didn't see any case of device-related thrombosis in the first week after device implantation, and during follow-up we had only three cases 
of uh, device thrombosis, giving a rate of device thrombosis of 1.4%. Uh, was this in expense of an increased uh, rate of stroke uh, that we used just aspirin monotherapy? I don't believe so, because if you look at the actual stroke rate in our cohort, it was 2.3% uh, per year. And compared to what we should expect from the chat fast score, this was a reduction in 59%, uh, a risk reduction of 59%. And also looking at major bleeding, we definitely still had major bleeding even with aspirin monotherapy, but uh, reduced compared to the expected bleeding rate from the HASPET score. I think uh, that device-related thrombosis is definitely multifactorial. It's not just a question about the, uh, the specific anti-thrombotic uh, regimen. This is some of the factors I believe can influence uh, uh, the risk for device-related uh, thrombosis. If you have a very reduced left ventricular function, you can have slow flow in your left atrium. If you have a very high chest fast score, if you have a high platelet count, device design is important. We know that with, for instance, the ACP where we had the screw end, we could see thrombus formation on the screw end. So the device design is important. I think that if we implant the device too deeply into the left atrial appendage, we will have a remnant in front of the disc with slow flow. And um, I believe that that is a very important risk factor for device uh, thrombosis. And maybe also if we have period device leaks and flow in between the disc and the lobe, it can be a risk factor for thrombus formation. So in conclusion, using a strategy of aspirin monotherapy as antithrombotic treatment after implantation of the ACP or the amulet, we did see a low rate of device-related thrombosis of 1.4%, and we looked very closely both by TE and by CT scanning. So, at the same time, we still kept efficacy of this treatment seeing a risk reduction in, uh, of stroke by 59% and a risk reduction of major bleeding of uh, 38%. So I think our research suggests that LAAO with Amplatzer devices may be safely performed with aspirin monotherapy after implantation without running an increased risk of device-related thrombosis or stroke. And I also want to highlight my own personal belief that mechanical factors such as the implantation depth and the completeness of LAA sealing are likely important factors in the mechanism of uh, device-related thrombosis. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.